Good day students, welcome to math.serve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over section 10.2 on our series on circles. We're going to be looking at um, congruent chords and arcs. The types of problems we're going to be covering in this presentation is given here, where you have a circle with two congruent chords, and you're asked to use it to find x in the equation relating the corresponding arcs. Don't forget we have some practice problems at the end of this presentation for you to try out in order to demonstrate mastery of the contents of this presentation. All right, to get us started, we're going to take a look at the theorem that will be guiding our problem solving process. To do this, we're going to go to our website at mathgotserved.com and then we're going to go to geometry and then we're just going to scroll down to our theorems and postulates section. So on the circles, congruent chords and arcs theorem, click on that. All right, so this is what we're going to be working with today. The theorem basically states that two chords of a circle are congruent if and only if their corresponding arcs are congruent. Okay, so we have chord AB and BC here. By the markings, we can tell that they're congruent. And what the theorem is telling us is these two chords are congruent if and only if arc AB, which corresponds to segment AB, and arc BC, which corresponds to chord BC, are also congruent. So we have an if and only if um, situation like this. You can go in both directions. One implies the other, and the other implies the first. All right? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at problem number one. So for question one, we are finding the value of x, okay, just a variable. We're not actually finding an actual measure of any parts of this um, circle. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, all right, so what are we given in this situation here? We're given two chords of a circle that are congruent, okay? So we can state that um, Rs, chord Rs, is congruent to um, chord TS. This is the case if and only if what? Based on what we just talked about. This is the case if and only if the corresponding arcs, namely arc RS, is congruent to arc TS. All right, based on the uh, theorem we just looked about, congruent chords and arcs, okay? So what does this follow? Since chord RS and TS um, since arc RS and arc TS are congruent, that follows that their measures are going to be equal. Okay? So the measure of arc RS is going to be congruent to the measure in degrees of arc TS. Now we can carry out our substitution. Measure of arc RS is 21 degrees. And that, oh, sorry, so this has to be equal. It's not congruent right here. All right, measure of arc RS is equal to measure of arc TS. So they're comparing numbers here, not objects. Okay, so 21 is equal to the measure of arc TS, which is the quantity 12x minus 15. Okay, now we're going to flex the algebra muscles to uh, solve this. We're going to move 15 to the other side, divide by 12, and we should be done. All right, so let's do it. So um, add 15 to both sides to get the variable isolated on one side of the equation. When we do that, we're going to have 21 plus 15 is 36. 36 is equal to, so this adds up to 0, 12x. Okay. To finish this up, we just simply uh, get rid of that 12 on the right side. The relation is multiplication, so we use the inverse, which is division, divide both sides by 12 and then we'll get the value of x, okay? We're going to get x is equal to 36 divided by 12 is three. Bam, there goes the answer to question number one. All right, let's take a look at question number two. We have the reversal direction, the reverse direction here, because we now have congruent arcs, and we're using it to find a variable associated with one of the corresponding chords. All right, so let's go ahead and start with what we are given in this scenario. So here we're given, we know that um, arc EF 
is congruent to arc GH. Okay, this is the case if and only if based on the theorem we just talked about. If and only if um, chord EF is congruent to chord GH. Okay, and what does this follow? What follows after this? Well, if chord EF and GH are congruent, then their lengths are going to be the same, right? So the length of segment or chord EF, EF, is going to be equal to GH. Now I can make a substitution here and solve for our variable Y. So EF is 41 units and GH is 3, quantity 3Y plus 2. To get Y isolated, we're going to subtract 2 from both sides, divide by 3, end of story, right? Using our skills from algebra. All right, so when we subtract uh, 2 from both sides, we're going to have 39 is equal to 3y. To isolate y, we divide both sides by 3, okay, to undo that multiplication operation. And then our final answer, y, is going to be equal to 39 divided by 3 is 13. Bam. There goes the answer to question number 2. All right, let's take a look at our uh, question 3. Uh, in this actual example, we are actually finding um, the length of chord XY. We're not just looking for a variable in this particular case. All right. So we're given that two, two arcs are congruent. So let's see what we can write based on that given information. So based on what we were given, we know that um, arc VW is congruent to arc x y okay this is the case if and only if their corresponding arcs vw and x the x y are congruent bam all right so what follows from this since these two chords are congruent then their lengths are equal so vw which is the length of chord VW is equal to uh, the length of X chord XY, which is just XY. By substitution, we substitute the corresponding algebraic expressions for X plus 13 is equal to XY is 7X plus 18 by substitution. All right, now to get X by itself, um, we're just going to collect like terms. So Let's have the x's on the left side, so because this is bigger, and if I subtract the smaller from the bigger, I'll have a positive uh, variable term, which will reduce one additional operation, okay? I don't want, I don't like dealing with negatives. So subtract 7x from both sides. Subtract 7x from both sides, and I need the 13, the constants to the right, so this is plus 13, use the opposite operation, subtract 13. Just doing algebra here to solve for x, okay? All right, so if we carry out the operation, we have 14 minus 7, 14x minus 7x is 7x. These are opposites, add up to 0. These are opposites, add up to 0. 18 minus 13 is 5, okay? To get x by itself, we're just going to simply divide both sides of the equation by 7, the coefficient of x, okay? And then x is equal to 5 over 7. Ladies and gentlemen, are we done with this question? The answer is no. Remember, make sure you are always answering the question. The question asks for the length of xy, okay? So we know that xy segment xy is 7x plus 18 units long and x is 5 over 7 so all we're just going to do is substitute this value into x and then we will know what uh the length of segment chord xy is okay all right so xy is going to be 7 so take the x out substitute it with its value which is 5 over 7 plus 18 okay just simplify Divide, divide, using order of operations here. And then we have 5 plus 18, which is equal to 23. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, the length of chord X 
y is 23 units. Alrighty, so let's take a look at uh, the last one, number four, and then we'll give you some practice problems to try out. Okay, this is similar to problem three. Um, in this particular uh, problem, we are to find the measure of an arc. Okay, what was the angular measure of arc RS? That's what we're looking for here. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. <coughs> so uh, in this particular example, we are given the information that these two chords, RS and PQ, are congruent. So uh, chord RS is congruent to chord PQ. Okay. And based on the theorem we talked about earlier, this is the case if and only if the corresponding arcs are congruent. So if um, these two are congruent, these two are congruent if and only if arc RS is congruent to arc PQ. Okay. And what does this follow? This follows that uh, the measures of the arcs are congruent also. So measure of arc RS is congruent, I mean, sorry, is equal to the measure of arc PQ. Okay. All right. If we substitute the corresponding quantities that are e equal to the measures of each arc, we're going to have measure of arc RS 3x plus 82 is equal to measure of arc PQ 6x plus 4. Okay. All right. Let's solve this for x. We're going to move the x's to the left side, to the right side, and the constants to the left. All right, positive 3x, if I want to move it to the right side, I'll use the inverse operation. I'll subtract 3x from both sides. And then for this 4, I'll subtract 4 from both sides to move all the constants to the left side of my equation. All right, we're going to combine downwards to I uh, have all the variables on one side and the constants on the other side. All right, so positive 3x minus 3x adds up to 0. 82 minus 4 is positive 78. 6x minus 3x is 3x. Positive 4 minus 4 is 0. Okay. All right. To get x by itself, we just simply divide both sides by 3. And then that will give us the value of x. All right. Uh, 3 goes into 7 twice. Carry 1. 3 goes into 18, 6. x is equal to 26. We're not done yet. Remember, the problem asks us to find uh, the measure of, our, of arc RS. All right. So we know that the measure of arc RS is given by the quantity 3x plus 82, and x is 26. So we just make a simple substitution here to find the actual value of the measure of arc RS. We're going to substitute the value of x, which is 26, into this expression right here. Bam. Okay, so that's going to give us three times uh, quantity 26. Always use parentheses for substitution to avoid making um, errors in your substitution. Okay, and now to simplify this, please excuse my idea and Sally. Okay, you multiply before you add. So if you multiply three times 26, you get 78 plus 82. Add these two together. Um, this is 15,160. Since it's an angular measure, you put the degree as the unit. So, ladies and gentlemen, the measure of arc RS is 160 degrees. Alrighty, so here are your four practice problems that we'd we'll like you to try out. So, go ahead and pause the video presentation at this time. Try out these four practice problems. When you're done, click on the playback button, and we are going to reveal what the correct answers are. Alrighty, welcome back. Hopefully you had a chance to try out the four practice problems. Here are your answers. Go ahead and check your answers. All right, let us know how well you did in the comments section. If you got them all right, go ahead and destroy that like button for us. If you have any questions or comments about what we went over, in the original presentation or in these practice problems, you can specify it in the comment section below. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Don't forget to help support our channel by subscribing, liking, and sharing this video with your friends. Tons of support resources can be found at mathgodserve.com or you just take a look at the links in the description below. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.